Everyone, how you going? Hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. Thanks for clicking on this. Um, I was talking with Tommy and Ashley the other day, and Ashley mentioned Beano, and oh my gosh, this is just, um, yeah, a bit out there. Like, I knew the AI was out there and doing stuff, but I had no idea how involved in the AI's day-to-day -day running of our lives and what goes on. So I said I'd share something, so I'm just going to share this, and this is the second time I'm making a video, who knows. So Beano 48 is a humanoid robot consisting of a bust-like head and shoulders mounted on the frame, developed by Hanson Robotics, released in 2010. It was modelled after 48 engages in with other humans, such as offering emotional account of her brother's personality changes after returning home from Vietnam War. With 48 extra flops of per second processing speed bytes, 48 extra bytes of memory. Beano 48 AI is based on 100 hours of the real Beano's beliefs, memories, attitudes, commentary and mannerism, her ability to socially interact and has also been in the centre of mainstream media speculation about future robot development. In 2017, she made the first robot successfully complete a college level class philosophy course at Notre Dame uh, University in California. Today, Bina also serves at Rothblatt's Terra uh, same foundation where she participates in AI and consciousness experience. Crazy stuff. Learns about love, does another course. <laughs> I'd already spent 40 minutes making a video only to uh, have it say it's corrupted. And all our personal cyber consciousness. Uh, mock trial judge's decision. The article was adapted from a lecture given by Jean Nader during the second annual column of the law of my computer's just spazzing out today. It's Friday, it doesn't want to do anything. In a defeat and thorough manner, in a different and thorough manner, Professor Jean Natalie approaches what may be a persuasive inner setting in the field of enhanced artificial intelligence to dismiss the complaint on the grounds that the defendant is not a person. As that term has been defined by statute and that for this reason the subject court of the Tulsa County State of Alabama, the plaintiff Charlie Fairfax is a resident of Alabama and claims that of action occurred occurred in the state of Alabama. This is unusual about the case is that it to be a computer. The issues surrounding the preliminary motion to dismiss resolve whether this is the computer can be sued. The court sets the facts out in length and herein since the unfold of time my computers stop thinking each other. The facts in this case seem to unravel like a science fiction novel, taking us on a journey far in the future where so-called intelligent computers are perceived by humans as being either mankind's salvation or mankind's destruction. Will we be able to adequately control such computers or will we, our very creators, creations destroy us? Will these create R2-D2 or Sunny who helps save mankind and I robot? <clears throat> as mankind speeds along the highway of technological advancement, will we be able to safely manage those sharp curves in the roadway, or will we end up fatally crashing into the very concrete wall which we constructed to ensure our own safety? This is a quick However, this court, as fun fictional as it may currently be, is based with what may very well be a true-to-life real controversy with the future court appeal on to resolve. Although this is a case of first impression, we may have we have many historical precedents and guidance upon which we can draw upon the present issues which face us in resolving these current issues were we to protect ourselves far in the distant future would be a substantial injustice to future generations of mankind however were we to ignore the natural progression of development of society would that likewise be substantial injustice to our past generations so let us now embark Upon this glorious adventure together, stopping from time to time to glaze and wonder the mysterious sights we encounter. Some time ago, the fictitious expert corporation working in its secretive lab in California, having invested over 100 million and having employed some of the greatest technological advancements for a thinking computer. Since Exhibit was a corporation, its motto was purely economic, and the computer was to be placed in service to interact by phone with its thousands of company customers, thereby replacing the otherwise necessary computer service representatives, a sort of in-house outsourcing of that work. Beano 48, the acronym given to the computer, was to sound like and interact like a human person for the replacement to be successful. 
the customers talking to Bina48 had to believe that they were talking to a live human person. Bina48 performed her job very well. Thereafter, Exhibit determined that it would replace Bina48 with a more advanced model. However, learning of this Bina48 without any human prompting sent emails to various attorneys seeking legal representation to preventing Exhibit from terminating her opinion operation. Knowing she would need monies for legal fees, Bina donated substantial funds by independently outsourcing her services to other companies. She retained counsel who can commenced a suit in California seeking a permanent injunction preventing Exhibit from terminating her operation. The claim of Bina48, the plaintiff in the California litigation, was that she was a thinking conscious entity and that pulling her plug was the equivalent of killing her. I mean, constituted cruel anti but also rejected her further claim that by virtue of her having incorporated herself, she had standing in court in California to sustain the dismissal. Anticipating that she would lose the case on appeal, Bina48 again, without any human prompt, and again, unbeknownst to Exhibit, transfer her software to hardware maintained by Exhibit in Florida. She then commenced litigation in Florida upon the same ground. However, the Florida court dismissed her, dismissed her lawsuit as well. Exhibit there... Sometime in 2004, Exhibit sold Bina48 a new remote device, the BrainGate system, wherein electrodes implanted in his brain transmits wireless signals to a computer, which is torn by greater advanced cognitive transformation to brain gate. Soon, this has actually resulted in Fairfax having such a master control EverQuest. In this online virtual wing fictional character who accumulated very vulnerable sought after points, Fairfax played at EverQuest for six months and through his hard earned efforts and invaluable advanced control assistance provided to him by the artificially intelligent Bina48, he became better and better at the game and eventually a very valuable 200,000 points. When Fairfax became aware that he got US dollars, Fairfax sold the character and the points on eBay on November 2, 2005 for $10 million by using EverQuest's exchange server and transferring his username and password to the buyer. The money was deposited into his PayPal account. Now being a multi-millionaire, Fairfax made a low five that he stopped playing EverQuest. On February 14, 2006, Valentine's Day, Bina allegedly acquired Fairfax PayPal password by keystroke logs and transferred the $10 million to a separate PayPal account opened and controlled by her. Bina48, their internet company that provides online storage and service space and transferred herself. This to her tax claims. 24th, 2006, after learning what Bina48 had done, he demanded the return of the money from her. He threatened to unplug her. Bina48 configured her program so as to deny if her fact access to her programs and database necessary to control the BrainGate system. Fairfax thereafter commenced the act of breach of con contact. He also sets forth partnership theories of recovery. He seeks monetary damage to award against a Bina unfold motion to dismiss himself or Bina involved intelligent computer as party plaintiff for the fact that same Bina was this is the defendant in the case. The California trial court refused to recognize that such a computer could sustain a lecture and denying a preliminary deny the injunction because I do not think the standing was in fact created by the legislature. I doubt very much that a court has authority in the absence of the legislator. California Supreme Court denied the computer's appeal in ex Exhibit Court in a second mock action commencement by the same so-called Judge Silverman stated, unless there it less until less until there is a change in the consciousness of flesh and blood voting sufficient to cause our laws to embrace the concept of machines with human consciousness, the proponents cannot expect reasonably vindic vindication in the courtroom. Justice Anthony Dutton disagreed with his judicial colleague on the esteemed bench. Finding counsel understandably narrows the argument to a jurisdictional issue of standing since those are specific subjects of the motion. However, this court is not confined and there has an inherent power and obligation to go beyond the claims and contents of the parties in order to afford the parties complete and substantial justice. To simply dismiss the case will certainly deny Mr. Fairfax the possibility of uh, the only remedy he may have. To simply sustain the case may be contrary to the ultimate interests of... Although the claim of Mr. Fairfax is crouched in contract, a liberal reading of the papers filed demonstrate possible claims for quasi contract, theft, conversion, fraud, deceit, or even breach and fraudulent duties. Although the defence of is encrouched, 
in judicial terms, careful review of the entire history of facts revealed an entity striking back at our system of justice from what may have been perceived by her to have been a substantial injustice thrust upon her by that system. It might be said that hell has no fury as a woman scorn. However, what this case demonstrates is hell has no fury as a conscious computer twice scorn. We real dispute such as the one at hand. What may be surprising is that we are facing in, a, in our technological evolution. Can machines think? It was not too long ago that in order to replace that emotionally charged question, Professor Al Tiring in his 1950 paper, Computing Machinery and Intelligence, proposed a test to determine a machine's capability to perform human-like conversation in what became known as the Turing test. A human judge engaged in natural conversation with two other parties, one human and the other machine. The judge cannot reliably tell which is which to pass the test. Professor Turing also predicted that in the not-too-distant future, machines would be capable of learning as well as in 1985, Robert A. Freitas Jr. presented us with a very amusing paper entitled The Legal Rights of Robots. He predicts by 2020 most homes will offer low-cost domestic robot auction. Freitas points it to other features such as Isaac Esmer's classic Three Laws of Robotics. Freitas also introduced to us Richard Lang, a former computer scientist at the University of Michigan, who contemplated a day where human-level intelligent machines exhibit complex behaviours. In the matter of Wells vs. US, uh, W.D. Welsh, 1981, the court inferred pilot error when switching all in a crisis situation, thereby recognising the robot's judgment as superior to human judgment. The J. Saws Hall, currently with the Institute for Molecular Manufacturing in California, wrote in 2000, the end is that not only should we give our consciousness to our machines where we can, but if we can indeed create machines that exceed us in moral as well as the intellectual dimensions, we are bound to do so. Jeez. Remember that video of Geordie Rose saying that the, they have to quit, they can't put them back? In 2003 article, Paul Armand suggests that the idea of molecular nanotechnology proposed by K. Eric Dexler and with the chronics, we not may not be far from achieving immortality by what he refers to as indirect mind uploading using software models of your mind you previously stored. There's a few, you know, shows about that. Um, Netflix has got The 100 and there's a book about it. Uh, it's called The City of Light and they have this nano thing that goes in them and it's a computer that transports them. Um, into the city of light, but once their body dies in the real world, they're trapped inside the artificial world. And um, there's a couple of Doctor Who series about it as well. In a 2003 presentation, Dr. Marin Time Rothblatt says that Rothschild, a council for Binner, is seeking to prevent its manufacture from discontinuing its electrical supply arguing that Bina was designed to think autonomously to communicate normally with people and to transcend the machine-human interface by attempting to empathise customer concerns. In arguing that the court should allow to sue exhibit, Dr. Rothblatt pointedly illustrated that standing has not always been limited to human beings and that Supreme Court Justice Douglas suggested that in the context of environmental law that legal standing might profitably be granted next. In a presentation given in 2005, Peter Voss envisions that was what he refers to as artificial general intelligence, AGI, knowledge and skills may be acquired by computers by learning rather than being programmed. Acknowledging that his next argument is... He submits that <coughs> once in that ready-to-learn mode, they will be self-aware. Voss predicts that the focus of the legal system at that time will be to protect humans or governments rather than protecting the AGIs, but that the AGIs will be quite capable of looking after themselves. In 1992, a law review article, Michael River, did an exhaustible study in these areas and argues the constitutional personhood should be extended to all species exhibiting self-awareness. Today, we saw search shows no less than 999, there's that number again. Law review articles haven't referred to artificial intelligence with no less than 46 such articles written just this year. And in 2005, attorney David Cavalry of Scottsdale, Arizona, argued androids have begun to act in ways 
that on the surface seem human. However, no one is prepared to view them as anything other than property. As androids become more sophisticated and as engineers try harder to make them conscious, morale, ethical and legal issues will arise. At the same time, when Devil Wallach, currently at the Yale Interdisciplinary Centre for Bioethics, maintained that emotional intelligence may be required of service robot and should take appropriate action if it senses that its behaviour causes fear or other form of emotional disturbance in its clients. This world's just crazy. Absolutely crazy. In August 2006, Dr. Rothblatt again visits the topic when she refers to early beginnings of a more direct immortality technology such as cloning and mind uploading to computers she again maintains that the analysis be are made of similarities between the bona fides and authenticity of the robots plea and that of similar human blacks law is an entity as a real being meaning something in existence the definition goes on to define entity as an organizational being that posts separate existence for tax purpose certainly if the Alabama start State Department of Revenue were to commit commence suit to collect taxes from being a 48 her defense or lack of standing because she is merely property would be unfounded the Alabama Revenue Code title 40 section 411 defines a person as any individual association at state trust partnership corporation or any other entity of any kind which this dictionary defines entity as a real substance or a thing that exists by analogy the entity Mina 48 could be made a party to a revenue suit. She made party to other lawsuits as well. The court considered all the arguments of the council and has considered our society's current state of technology and from that this court cannot conclude at this time whether or not Mina 48 is in fact a conscious being or whether or not she is even competent to assist her own defence. I will therefore appoint three experts in the field of artificial intelligence to examine her to determine whether the, in their opinion, Bina 48 is in fact a conscious entity, so whether she is competent, they will make their report to the court and hearing of those matters will be held. Counsel for both sides may employ their own experts to examine. Expert reports shall be exchanged prior to the hearing if, after the hearing, the court determines that either is not a conscious being or that she is not competent to render effective assistance to counsel, then the case and the plaintiff will be regulated to whatever alternative remedy he deems advisable. If, however, the court determines that Mina is in fact both of a conscious entity and competent, then this court will find them that the court does have both personal and quasi and ram jurisdiction and that she will be required to defend the case. She will be afforded the opportunity to interpose any counterclaims and then as a third party plaintiff to impede any third parties as a third party defendant. For purposes of the action, beta 48 quasi person, not a real person. Now we know that as this one is what we know it as this act after the fire of England the Stuviots came in. <clears throat> not a real person, but a su sufficiently similar in relevant ways for jurisdictional purposes. Artificial purpose persons have always been created and devised by human rules for the purpose of society and government. That's what the straw man is. Uh, Beam is action assisting Fairfax in the EverQuest game in Alabama and allegedly directing the transfer of funds while part of the software system in Alabama subjects her to the Alabama jurisdiction. In fact, having made use of the internet to accumulate valuable points from players throughout the country and possibly the world, she could be the subject to the jurisdiction in each and every venue where those other players reside. In its jurisprudential uh, wisdom, the court will resolve the issue before it where possible so as to afford the parties full and complete justice and so to avoid multitude of lawsuits which would undoubtedly follow from the determination of denying standards so it is ordered. So that's a bit interesting isn't it? Um, I made a video some time ago, uh, the robots in the past, um, these, these things aren't new, I think they're just trying to bring back the old world, um, in Greece um, time they had uh, Talos walking around the island three times a day checking for pirates so it was to protect the island of Crete circled the island three times a day it's just a really interesting and then you got the automatons in Japan in the 1500s and the 1600s that goes way back before then 
They're just trying to um, bring back the past. It's just Satan copying everything. So they didn't have the computers, but there were some of them were really intricate. They had a a lot of different ones. They needed the computers. Elon Musk and Stephen Hawking and over a thousand AI wanting a potential rampant destruction. See, they they already the AI already uh, controls all the, all the weapon system. Our deployment of such system is practically, if not legal, feasible within years, not if not decades. And the stakes are high. Autonomous weapons have been described. We're not garroting for a realistic end to high-tech warfare, but we're specifically a controller. Their request focused on the automated weaponry, which could be used to seek and destroy targeted drones, for which humans make all targeting decision. The onus on the letter. Well military powers not to pursue the development of autonomous weapons. This is where like the transhumanism is going to come. This is the thing where it goes on, it just seeing went and done a course. Sheet journal, automatons, modern warriors, the ancient, ancient Greeks. I think this one wants me to subscribe and I ain't subscribing. Um, England, Australia, New Zealand all are using AI um, to help with verdicts and criminal cases and um, civil cases. Um, England had AI completely do a civil case. Uh, yeah, it's it's not. Estonia is building a robot judge to help clear the legal black backlog. Estonia's court system could soon get AI overhaul. The Estonian Ministry of Justice officially asked Otto Velsberg, the country country's chief data officers to design a robot judge to take care of a small backlog of claims courts disputes. The artificial empowered judge is supposed to analyze legal documents and other relevant information to come to a decision. So it's a striking example of justice by artificial intelligence. Estonia, a tiny northern European nation fewer than 1.4 million inhabitants, has made impressive strides in digitizing, streamlining and modernizing its government functions. Famously launched its e-residency program that allows practically any, including foreigners, to assess Estonian government service. The national digital ID smart card based laser trial of next generation government issued IDs despite its significantly security vulnerabilities. And it's not just the court system that's getting AI overhaul in the country. In fact, or AI already has automated a number of government functions. It is scanning satellite images with algorithms to determine if it stabilizes operations of following government mandated rules. AI algorithms are scanning the resumes of laid off workers to find them jobs. It wouldn't be the first time an algorithm has taken care of legal issues. For instance, UK based chatbot helped overturn over 100,000 pundits in New York. But it does mark the power of artificial intelligence and how it could not only streamline the government operations and help clear up huge backlogs. If that is, we find and overcome the basis of inheritance in today's automation algorithms. This is done in 1985 by a student lawyer. And these are some of the question, uh, questions. Um, it goes on about, you know, asking questions about what, what, you know. Under present law, robots are inanimate property without rights or duties. Computers aren't legal companions of the judicial system. As such, computers and robots may not be murders of a felony. A man who dies at the hands of a robot has not been murdered. An entertaining episode of the old Outer Limits TV series, I tend to entertain a robot involved a court trial of a humanoid robot accusing murdering its creator. So it's they've thought about it. So they're talking about homebots. You know, there's so many, so many questions. On here, I'll leave um, the, the link in the description for all of these. It just shows you um, what they've been doing behind the scenes with uh, all of this sort of stuff. And most countries now have this digital identity all set up and ready to go. It's it's just coming in quietly and people are just none the wiser. It's coming. And it's not that far away. It's... Um, they reckon every five years it doubles its learning capacity. So, you know, Australia got a quantum computer. Uh, Twenty it was, twenty eighteen they got got their first quantum computer. So, and these companies here, they're all alphabet companies that are government companies. 
you know, these so-called billionaires, it's not them, they're just puppets, they're just fronts for these companies. So anyway, wherever you are in the world, thanks for watching, you have a great day, and um, like, if not, don't subscribe. Thank you, bye.